You feel it? I feel it. <laughs> Welcome back everyone. Welcome to another great video of Cafecito. And today we have a very special occasion. It, oh. Do we? We have a very special coffee. All thanks to my cousin Carlos. So if you're watching this, thank you so much. But thank you. What'd you say? <laughs> oh. I said thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I Can't appreciate it. We, we appreciate it. So this is a collaboration with Juan Valdez for what it looks like, obviously. But it's a special coffee, literally. Like that's the name of it. It's a special coffee. It looks like we got Huescaso Cafe. And it's an origin of Nariño of Colombia. Nariño is actually at the very west coast of Colombia. But this is gonna be an interesting one. Like last time we reviewed Juan Valdez clearly went viral well wouldn't say viral but a lot of people like one though. liked it yeah. yeah um and it is actually a really good brand we enjoy it like mm -hmm. it's a very very good coffee bean that they have that they produce that they make tons of variations tons of we different may, roses so yeah we may have mentioned it in our first video but we did go to a one valdez cafe in miami. miami we didn't get coffee though we got we got like smoothies or something yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we, it was we, really cute yeah and per last Last video, if we did mention it, I don't remember, but yeah, there it's essentially like a Starbucks, only in Florida though. But theirs is very unique, in my opinion. It's very unique. It, it's more so like very tailored and in, down into our origin of Colombia, I would say. And the coffee itself, it's very good. I figured I'd go ahead and read this. It's a little bit of a paragraph, so. Bear with me, but it's part of it. So this coffee is cultivated in the Andes mountain range located in Buesaco, in parentheses, Nariño, south of Colombia, at an altitude between 1850, 1850, and two, oh no, 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 I'm wrong. 1.85 and 2.2 meters above sea level. Is that, is that meters? Is that right? Yeah, so Would it be a thousand though? Do they use dots instead of commas in Colombia? They use meters over there. They don't use. But feet. is this one thousand or one point eight five? One. Uh, well, that's a good question. Probably one thousand. One thousand, right? Probably I mean, one point eight meters. That's, that's not a lot. That's not a lot. Okay, so I was right. <laughs> we're, we're talking about coffee, not math. Well, it's important. Uh, no, I'm just saying. <laughs> no, we don't know that. Okay, one thousand eight hundred fifty <laughs> and two thousand two hundred meters above sea level by coffee growers who want to improve their quality of life by producing special coffees committed to an environmentally sustainable agriculture, organic and socially responsible, where women are the protagonists with their participation and dedication. Due to its geographical position, weather, and volcanic soils, Wasako's coffee is recognized as one of the best cup quality coffee on the planet. Mm. And what I like about this, which I noticed when I was looking at the packaging, it says at the bottom, a company committed with the environment and the preservation of bees, which there's actually bees on the front. The packaging is pretty pretty cute. You'll get a close up here and it has little bees on it with the, the flowers. Uh, I don't know what these types of flowers are, but very cute. I appreciate that they help with the preservation of bees because bees are very, very important. We'll talk about that in a bit. Besides that, this is a medium. Is this a medium roast? Yeah, we're not sure what, but it does have some notes. We have pronounced floral, chocolate, and caramel notes. And the acidity is citrus bright. The taste is intense citrus caramel. So we will put that to the test. Awesome. I say okay. enough talking, let's get right to it. Looks very appetizing. The smell, amazing. The smell is really good for mm -hmm. sure. As soon as we dropped so it in here, it was really nice. So get first dips. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thoughts on the smell? I can smell. Very home style, very welcoming. Very uh, soothing. <laughs> Strong coffee smell, but I do I do smell a hint of something. I can't. I'm not mm. getting chocolate or caramel. Are you getting notes of that? The chocolate or caramel or citrus? I guess a little bit of the citrus. There's a little bit of the citrus towards the end of the smell. Yeah, like once you pull I feel it. it. You feel it? I feel it. <laughs> it smells really good. I'll tell you that much. I'm excited to try it. Yeah, it's a little hot, huh? 
You usually, ready? Usually we let it sit, but we didn't let it sit. Yeah. We're supposed to let it sit and wait. It smells great. I'm eager ready? to try. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I like it. Oh, I definitely taste that. The chocolate. citrus. I taste chocolate. And chocolate. It says floral, chocolate, or caramel, floral? citrus. I don't taste floral. I taste chocolate. Yeah, the chocolate is there. Yeah, this is really good coffee. I give this a nine. Nine, nine. and a half. Nine out of ten. One by this, you never fail us. This is really good. <laughs> I like it a lot. As I was mentioning earlier, I wanted to talk about some about the bees while we continue to drink this. Um, I actually did research in school. I got my master's degree and my focus for my research was on honeybees actually. And I, they are affected by a fungus. I'm not gonna go into great detail, but the fungi affects the larva of the honeybee and it's killing them. And unfortunately there's a lot of things that really affect honeybees. So preserving them is really important, which is like, as soon as I saw this, I was like, oh, that's awesome because without honeybees, we would be screwed. Um, pesticides can really destroy them. Uh, a lot of just general agriculture and then fungi coming around, other bugs can destroy them. And if we didn't have the bees, we wouldn't have a lot of our own food. Um, so obviously we're okay right now, but the population is dwindling. So there are some things you can do. Uh, one main one is don't kill them. Like if you see a bee in it, is around you like just let it be especially if it's a honeybee but all of them all of them are really helpful because they help to pollinate our flowers and plants you got the microbiologist right here so. <laughs> no but that's awesome i appreciate anything that tries to save the planet because honeybees are really cute too well you isn't like honeybees the overall like revolution as to how we build our ecosystem regardless mm, i mean they like the keystone species like i mean, I mean if without them we wouldn't have a lot of we wouldn't have a lot of like plants mm -hmm. therefore there wouldn't be oxygen right i mean it gets to a point though where you can do like artificial you yeah, know gmos and that's, that, that's literally where we're at right now it doesn't yeah. cost any good so unfortunately it's getting there but um and if you're gonna get like honey and stuff preferably shop locally like don't go to a general grocery store and buy like the the honey with in the bear or whatever because that's usually not sustainably sourced so if you go to like a local farmer or maybe even a friend or you could even have your own honey honey beehive in your backyard and people can manage it there's a whole service for this and you could potentially get honey that way but yeah try to try to be sustainable with that too take some notes kids <laughs> appreciate y'all watching once again i hope everybody had an amazing thanksgiving and an upcoming christmas and happy new year's if we don't upload by then but i'm sure we will mm -hmm. like always do the good old things and, and comment down below comment. any suggestions cafes in atlanta or bags of coffee that we can buy locally thank you all y'all have a good one have a good one thank you cheers <laughs>